So, you're looking for an idea for what to do with your IA. Your teacher never really explained it well, you don't care about maths enough to be able to come up with one yourself, and you just want to get it done easily and be over with it. Because in this video I'm going to be sharing 7 methods which you can use for your math IA. I ended up getting a 7 in my math IA with full marks, and I've coached a lot of kids for how to improve their math IA, and I recently just finished a statistics unit in my uni, and throughout that course we learned a bunch of new statistical methods, which I thought, wow, these could be like great methods which kids could use in their math IA. So I'm not going to be giving you specific topics, but I'm just going to be talking more generally about certain methods that you can use, which you can apply to things that you're interested in, to be able to write the IA. I made a video about the ultimate guide to the math IA. In that video I said that the most important thing that you can do for your math IA is figure out a method, and then just spend the whole IA talking about that method. If you want to see that video, it's linked over here. And that video did pretty well and I got a lot of responses from people asking, okay, this is great, but I don't know what to do. So yeah, in this video, I'm not going to give you like direct topics, but I'm going to be suggesting different methods that you could use to do your own IA. If you're going to use one of these methods, you're going to have to go off and learn the theory of it yourself. I'm going to link a lot of videos in the description which can help you do that. Some of them I have more resources than others. I also plan on making a few videos to explain how you can implement some of these methods. What I learned from doing Doing a bunch of assignments for my statistics scores is that there's literally so much that you can do with maths if you just know the right statistical tools to be able to implement the data analysis. And so I'm going to be sharing all of those, everything I learned from my uni statistics course methods and also some ideas from my friends I with you today. Most of these are ideas for statistics but I think statistics is a really good subject to do for your math IA because, because it's really easy to apply as long as you have a data set that you can use and you can get data from like anywhere. Okay, so my first idea is for you to do a difference of means test. This is probably one of the simplest ones to do, so this is good if you're probably in like one of the SL courses. Again, I'll leave all of the links in the description below for you to go and check out and research yourself for how to do this specifically. But essentially what you can do with this test is that you can test the difference between two means and see if there's a significant difference between them. For example, if you wanted to know whether there is a difference or not between the average salary for someone who graduated from community college versus an Ivy League school, you could do a difference of means test to test that. Or for example, if you're interested in music, you can figure out a metric to gauge the popularity of a song in your favorite artist's album. And then if there's two albums, you can test whether there's a significance between them, whether one is significantly more popular than the other. Because you can't say like, oh yeah, this one has more downloads than this one. But is that difference actually significant? You can use a difference of means test to figure that out. I had to write a whole assignment on this, so trust me, there's actually a lot more that goes into it. But yeah, that's my first idea. My second idea is very similar to this. It's basically a difference of proportions tests, and it basically does the same method as the difference of means test, but the equations are slightly different. So the difference of proportions test is different in that instead of comparing means, you're measuring proportions. A proportion is, for example, like the percentage of people who drop out of college, for example. One kid who I was helping advise him for his IA, he's trying to figure out whether there's a difference or not between the proportion of three-point shots made versus two-point shots made. So he's taking his favorite team in the NBA, and then for one season, he's going on the NBA stats website, and he's pulling out all of the, like, proportions for three-point shots. So if they shoot 10 shots and they make five, then the proportion would be 0 0.5. And he's finding the average of all of those proportions for all of the games in the season. And then he's going to compare those proportions of three-point shots made to proportions of two-point shots made and seeing whether there's a significant difference or not. Again, links in the description for more information. Okay, my third example, and yes, there's lots of stats here, but like stats are so easy to do because honestly, you can find data sets anywhere. You can like count your own data. You can make your own data. If you have data, you can basically do anything with the math, I honestly. You can even take your own data. That would like, you know, really show your personal engagement. But yes, this third one is doing a correlation and regression analysis. A correlation and regression analysis is basically where you're trying to find the relationship between two variables. For example, you could like survey everyone in your class and figure out how many hours they sleep at night versus what is their average GPA or something. And you can figure out whether there's a relationship between sleep and how good your grades are. Or you could collect the data from a bunch of different countries, for example, take their GPA and then compare it to some other metric, their average lifespan or something like that, I don't know. There's a lots of different variables and metrics and there's lots of data out there for country stuff, which you can try and figure out whether there's a relationship between. Correlation and regression analysis IAs are quite common. However, kids make a lot of mistakes on them. When I'm reading a correlation and regression analysis, I often see kids messing up the key terms, having incorrect interpretations, confusing correlation with causation, which you should know that correlation does not cause causation, doing simplistic interpretations of their data. And so if you do want to do this one, I would highly advise you to just like really study the video, like really like pay a lot of attention to like studying this and making sure you're getting your interpretations correct, because I just see a lot of misuse of key terms and incorrect interpretations. Now the fourth one is a more complicated statistical test, which is the ANOVA test. So remember before we 
we're talking about difference of means tests. Well, an ANOVA test will allow you to test multiple different means. So it's taking a step up a notch. It's, it's significantly more complicated than the difference of means test. But if you really show your understanding of it and you take time to learn it, then you could potentially do really well with this one and score high marks. My fifth one, and I promise this is my last statistics one, is you can do a test for normality. So you can test whether something's normally distributed or not. One of my friends did this and she got full marks. She basically wanted to see whether Indomie was normally distributed or not. And yeah, again, I'm going to encourage you to try and like explore that and figure out how to do it by yourself. But yeah, you could definitely take any distribution of data and then figure out whether it is normally distributed or not. So these are the examples that I gave in my original math edit video. I'm just going to continue with those. My sixth example is to do a volume of revolution IA. So if you study calculus, this might be more interesting for you. Trying to find the volume of any complicated object could work really well in your favor because it's pretty straightforward and simple, but there's still lots to talk about and a lot of math to do. What you want to find is you want to find like an object that's complicated enough that you're going to have to plot multiple curves. If you do anything with a straight line that's going to be too simple because that's just linear. Doing a wine glass could be good because if you can plot multiple different slopes on that then that would be good. It's also nice to do a bottle of some sorts because then you can submerge it underwater and figure out what the volume is through the method of seeing how high the water rises and then comparing that to your final result. Maybe it doesn't work so you have to try something again you know, evaluation. It can be good if you understand calculus and volume of revolution enough. Always research the theory before you start doing your IA because yeah, it's kind of just ridiculous to go in there not really understanding the theory behind what you're doing. Okay, my seventh option is to do what I did and find the fractal dimension of multiple different islands. I usually don't. I'm leaving this for last because for the people who I have seen do it, they make just a lot of mistakes because they don't actually understand the theory. They're just like copying mine and like they're not explaining the concepts correctly and, and it's very unclear what they're doing because this is a new topic. The IB examiner probably isn't familiar with it and you really should probably explain it really well and they just don't so so it doesn't really work out well in the end this goes for all of the ias you have to really understand what you're doing before you start doing the test because otherwise you're just going to fall into a lot of problems i probably spent a week researching fractals and dimensions maybe even two weeks i really made sure i figured out exactly what was happening before i started just going and plotting numbers on things. Same with the statistics test. Usually the reason why kids mess up is because they find someone else's statistics IA and they just copy it word for word and then they go and try and figure out the background information later. Sometimes it works if you get lucky and you, and you find out you do understand it, but from what I've seen, often going into something without fully understanding the theory means that you make a lot of mistakes, which you could have prevented if you had spent some time doing the actual research beforehand. And so yeah, I hope this video helped any of you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm planning on doing some videos explaining like my own steps for how to do them, but for now, I'm going to leave resources down in the description, which you can use. Anyways guys, I hope that helps. Leave any of your comments in the description below, and I'll see you next time.